What is Christmas all about? There was one lady who celebrated Christmas for 34 years. That's none other than Mary. Before Jesus was born, the news was given to her, the Savior is going to be born. Through you, Mary. And from the time he was born till he died on the cross, she was celebrating Christmas. Because the Bible says she was meditating everything in her heart. And I want to think about Mary. She was a blessed woman. She was a woman who meditated everything that was said to her. At the age of 12, when she went back to, went back to Jesus, where he was sitting and talking to the scribes, and he says, don't you know that I need to be in my father's house? The Bible says she was meditating on all these things. And I want every one of us to think about this. How many of us are really celebrating Christmas every day? It's not just one month or one day. We need to understand what Christmas is all about. Yes, we all know Christmas is all about love. But as I was praying, God gave this, gave this point what Christmas is all about. So we're going to see why I'm bringing this because we're going to celebrate the Christmas the whole month. And someone said, if you practice something for 30 or 40 days, it becomes a habit. So let's practice this Christmas month for this whole month and we're going to continue it for next year and the days to come. Hallelujah. So let us make it as a habit what Christmas is all about. Christmas is not about stars. Christmas is not about trees. Christmas is not about decoration. Christmas is not about gifts. Christmas is not about friendship. Christmas is not about calling relatives to home. Christmas is not about having wonderful things in our house. Christmas is not about these light things. Christmas is not about anything with the food items. Christmas is to do something with Christ. And if you understand this, your Christmas will be a better place or Christmas would be a joyful day or joyful days to come because Christmas was meant for every human being so what is this Christmas we all heard Christmas is all about love so I'm going to bring this aspect what God gave me when I was praying we're going to turn our Bibles to John chapter 3 verse 16 we all know this passage John chapter 3 verse 16. Open your Bibles. Everyone open your Bibles. Let's have a habit of bringing Bible to the church. I know we have all iPhones and iPads and uh, uh, softwares. But we cannot trust those softwares. Because many times when I go for village ministry, sometimes I don't take my Bible. This is my experience. Earlier I used to have my iPad. So I used to carry this iPad. I used to rely on this iPad. When I went to the village, there was no signals. And my Bible was not opening. Internet, not, internet was not opening. Nothing was opening. And then I had to preach upon God's leading. So I don't want any one of us to, uh, to expect God to give us uh, vision or uh, uh, what do you say, visions or mission during the time of uh, reading the word of God. Let's bring a Bible. Uh, I think hard copy would be better if you want to just bring your mobile phones. But still, I would prefer uh, take Bible. Invest on the Bible. I would tell this, invest on the Bible. Because people have spent a lot of their life translating this. People have given their lives for saving this Bible. People have given their families so that uh, they can bring this Bible to us. And many of us, we carry the old Bible which is 20 years old. Why we say? Because we don't want to spend money. We spend money on everything. But spend your money on the Bible. You will never regret it. Because this is something that God has given to us. John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yes, this verse talks about love. But think about this. God accepted people. Christmas is about accepting people. Are you able to understand? Christmas is accepting. 
God was looking at the people and these people were living in sinful life and God said I love these people so much I'm going to send my child or send my son so that he will bring them in relationship with me so that he will bring unity among us so that he will make us accepted with one another that's what we we need to understand Jesus came down to earth to reveal heaven to us and Jesus went back to heaven to reveal man's place in heaven he went back to say yes man or sinful men are doing mistakes but by my blood we will accept him hallelujah Christmas is all about accepting God accepts people the way they are he said those who believe me will not perish but have everlasting life that means people were perishing now he is accepting us for having everlasting life and we need to understand the first thing God accepted human beings Christmas is about accepting we all know we all have uh, dwelt on this Christmas is all about love yes we don't deny it and we say when we have love everything is covered but we generally don't show love we show love like the Pharisees and the Sadducees we show love to those people who are loving us we will call people who are to our own standard to our own status we will call for dinner for those people who are our friends but Bible says you need to accept one another God accepted humankind. That was the first Christmas. And we're going to see from the second person, Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38. Gospel according to Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Rejoice, favored woman, the Lord is with you. But she was deeply troubled by the statement, wondering what kind of greeting this could be. Then the angel told her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Now listen, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call his name Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of the most high and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom will have no end Mary asked the angel how can this be since I have not been intimate with a man the angel replied to her the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the most high will overshadow you therefore the Holy One to be born will be called the son of of God and consider your relative Elizabeth even she has conceived a son in her old age and this is a sixth month for her who was called barren for nothing will be impossible with God I am the Lord's slave said Mary may it be done to me according to your word that the angel left her look at this Mary is accepting God's plan She's accepting. She said, okay, Lord, I know it's going to be a problem because in those days, a mother without a husband or a, or a lady without a man in her life was said to be a, 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 a shame for her. But Mary said, okay, Lord, I accept your word. Look what Mary is doing. She's accepting the word of God. She's accepting God's plan in spite of all her doubts, in spite of all her struggle, in spite of all her insults. She knows that she's going to face insults. She knows that she's going to, she's going to go through shame. But she said, yes, I'm going to accept God's will. I'm going to accept God's plan. Christmas is about accepting God's word. Christmas is, a, is about accepting God's plan in your life. You really do not know what's going to happen in your life. But if you accept God's plan, you might not understand. That's what Isaiah chapter 55 verse 9. As the heavens are higher than the earth, 
also are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. The Bible says, as the heavens are higher than the earth. Are you able to understand? Look at the comparison that God gives. Where is heaven, where is earth? All those people who travel in the flights, you know about this. The more you keep going, the still you keep finding the skies. You still keep finding the skies. You'll only see white clouds. When I went in the flight for the first time, when I traveled in flight, it was going up, I was thinking, wow, this is the first cloud, it's over. But as I said, the other cloud was coming down again, it was going higher. They said 25,000 feet, something they were saying. They were, it's, as it went, I saw the clouds below and one more cloud above. You keep seeing those clouds as you keep traveling. The Bible says, as the heavens and the earth as the, as the heavens and the earth are separated or so far is my thoughts and your thoughts. We cannot understand God's thoughts. You need to understand this. We cannot understand God's ways. How much ever we try to understand, we will not be able to understand. Because his plans are higher than our plans. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. But still as a human being, we start trying to understand from the human perspective. Listen to this carefully. I said the same example yesterday in the Bible study. I would like to share this. Praise he cannot understand her dad's talk, basically. Jason, sorry, uh, Johan and Jonathan cannot understand Reverend Sam's thoughts. He will tell, you know how much hard I'm working? That's what the fathers tell. You know how much hard we are working? But the child says, I'm not bothered. You give me my school fees. You give me my, my toys. That's it. I'm not bothered how hard you work. They will tell, Daddy, please come and stay with us. Take holiday. But the dad knows if I take one day holiday, my salary is going to get cut. Children don't understand parents' thought. Parents talk. Parents always say, okay, you need to study, you need to get a good job. Children say, what? Parents are always saying, study, study, study. In school I'm studying, I'm going to tuition, I'm studying there. I'm coming back again, I'm doing my homework. And still my father and mother are still behind me saying, study, study, study. They can't understand the parents' thoughts. All the children, all the people who have grown up, you know what, uh, what I'm talking about. When we are young, we are always cursing our parents or not cursing or saying what kind of parents we have. They say study, study. But now, we, some people are regretting, hope I would have studied. Some people are saying, hope I would have studied more better, I would have got a better job, I would have got a good percentage. Listen to this carefully. We cannot understand God's thoughts. Many people are trying to understand God's thoughts in the human way. And God is telling, as far as from the heavens to the earth, so far is my thoughts and your thoughts. Just imagine how far is God's thought, how wonderful God's plan is. But we are still not able to accept God's plan. We want to see a sign like Gideon. You will say, Lord, show me a sign. Like how you showed to Gideon. Show me a sign like how you showed to Moses. We want to see signs. That's what Pharisees also said to Jesus. Show us a sign. You know what Jesus said? There is no sign given to you except Jonah. Sign of Jonah. We need to understand this. We are, we are, we are trying to understand God's plan. But Mary also tried to understand God's plan. And she said, Lord, how is this possible? How can I bear a child without being intimate with a man? And that's what Jesus, God, the Spirit of the Lord, the angel says this, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Then the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of, Dave, Son of God. And now Mary understood, I cannot understand God's plan. I cannot understand God's thoughts. He said, I'm your slave, let your will be done. You know what Christmas is all about? Christmas is accepting the word of God. Christmas is accepting God's plan in your life. Christmas is accepting God's will in your life. First thing, God accepted sinners. God accepted humankind. Now, second thing, Christmas is all about accepting God's word, God's plan, God's purpose in our life. We'll see the third person. 
Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 25 from the life of Joseph. This is a difficult point, but still we are going to see. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 25. The birth of Jesus Christ came about this way. After his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, it was discovered before they came together that she was pregnant by the Holy Spirit. So her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her publicly, decided to divorce her secretly. But after he had considered these things, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife because what has been conceived in her is the Holy Spirit. She'll give birth to a son and you are to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through, G through the prophet. See the virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son and they will name him Emmanuel which is translated God is with us. When Joseph got up from sleeping, he did as the Lord's angel had commanded him. He married her, but did not know her intimately until she gave birth to a son, and he named him Jesus. The third person, Crispus, is about accepting people despite of their faults. Accepting people in spite of the doubt that we have. You know, Mary did, was not doing a mistake, but still, Joseph had a doubt. Somewhere in his mind, he had a doubt. How can I marry a woman who is pregnant before marriage? And he thought to secretly divorce her. The Bible says, the angel of the Lord spoke to Joseph. Look at this. Christmas is all about accepting. Joseph accepted Mary in spite of all the doubts he had. He, Joseph accepted Mary in spite of all the things that was going in his mind. He was thinking, how can this be possible? I just got engaged and I come to know that my wife is pregnant or my fiance is pregnant. And how can this be? But still he accepted God's word. He accepted God's plan. He accepted God's purpose. Listen to this carefully. Many of us are, are in the spirit of Christmas. We ought to celebrate Christmas. We are decorated our house. Some people paint their house only during Christmas time. It's good. You're doing everything. But before you paint your house, clear your heart. Hallelujah. Christmas is all about cleaning your heart. Now many of us cannot accept one another. We are having grudge, we are having anger, unforgiveness, we are having all kinds of bitterness against others. This Christmas, let us have the heart of God and say we are going to accept everyone, no matter what kind of people they are, no matter what kind of situation they are in, no matter what kind of trouble they brought to you, no matter what kind of insults they brought to you, but still we are going to say, I am going to accept people because God accepted people in spite of their sins. Don't forget this. He was hanging on the cross and his father forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Can we get back to the heart of God and say, Lord, I want to celebrate Christmas this year. And this year we're going to celebrate Christmas by accepting one another. You know, the moment when I say unforgiveness, the moment when I say anger, who is that first person that comes to your mind? You have to forgive that person. If not, how much of decorations you do, how much of paintings you do, how much of food items you do, you are not celebrating Christmas. You will not have that real joy. Listen to this. Christmas will come every year. But the joy comes once and it never runs dry. Hallelujah. Christmas will come every year. I'm telling this again. Christmas comes every year. But the joy will come only once. And it remains in you forever. It becomes a stream of river 
flows in your belly, in your heart, and it overflows in you, and the joy will not be reduced or will not be decreased. It's not like a, like a market to go through recession. It's not like our river to run dry. Once God gives the joy in us, it bubbles in us and it overflows. But many of the Christians have not understood what Christmas is all about. That is the reason, fine, the wise men came all the way from the east. They came all the way from the east, traveled and came. And now they said, here is the king of the Jews. They worshipped him there. Listen to this, we never saw that these people were Christians. Or we, we, we don't see that these people were Jewish people. They, were, they came from very far. They were, they were the wise men who came and said, Here is the king. They recognized Jesus as a king. They, they offered their gifts. We need to understand this. We need to accept people. If we don't accept people, how much of a money you spend on decoration, how much of money you spend on calling your relatives. You can do Christmas after Christmas. You can enjoy with friends. But the real joy will be missing. The joy of Christmas. The joy of having Christ in us. And that is what we need to understand. Where am I not accepting people? Am I accepting people? Don't forget, Jesus came to the world to save the sinners. While we were still sinners, the Bible says, He loved us. He did not love us when we became righteous. He loved us while we were still sinners. And why are we not able to accept other people? I have been meditating on the kingdom of heaven. I've been, I've been trying to understand what is this kingdom of heaven all about from the book of Matthew. I've, I've got these ten parables, amazing parables. I, I, I wonder what, how Jesus is explaining this. He says the kingdom of heaven is like a good seed that the, the, the man sowed or sowed on the, or in the field. And when the harvest came, the good seed was the wheat was taken and the weeds were thrown into fire. He explains about the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God so amazingly. And he says once we find the joy, we'll have it forever. But many of us, we don't have the joy. Why? Because we say we are Christians. We are namesake Christians, but we are not living like Christians. We are saying my grandfather, my father, my uncle, my auntie, everyone is pastors. Listen to this carefully. They might be pastors, they might be Christians from the time they were born. There is nothing called as Christians for the time they are born. We only have born again Christians. How much of a history you have. But if you don't have Christ, you cannot enjoy Christmas. It's time for us to accept the word of God. Jesus or God accepted the sinners. He accepted, he sent his son because of the love that he has. And he accepted every human kind. Second thing, Mary accepted God's plan. In spite of all the doubts she had, in spite of all the questions that he had, she had in her mind, she said, I'm going to accept God's word. I do not know what happened, but I believe that I'm going to be, I'm safe in the hands of God. And she accepted God's plan. Joseph accepted Mary according to the word of God. And you need to understand, you need to accept one another based on the word of God. The word of God says, accept one another, be in unity. And together, pray together. How many of us are really accepting one another? If we can't accept, we are not celebrating the real Christmas. And then we found the Christmas was declared to the shepherds. The shepherds came running in the night. We all know about this. We all know about the story about the Christmas. The shepherds came in the night. And Mary and Joseph did not tell, you are not allowed, please get out. They never said that. They said, please do come. They came and worshipped the Lord. They came and worshipped Jesus Christ. We find when Christmas or Christ was born, every kind of people came to Christ. The wise men came. The shepherds came. And all the people around those people who came to know about Jesus, they came worshipping Lord. There was no barriers Listen to this. 
if you and i were supposed to be born and if you and i you and i were given a choice definitely i don't know where you would have selected but i would have selected somewhere in england in queen elizabeth's line i would have selected i want to become the prince i don't know how, i don't know about you where you have been selected if you have if you were given the choice okay now select like how google maps you select whichever place you want wherever you want to born to whomever you want to be born if you are given a choice whom will you select i do not know who about you think about this but jesus selected to be born in a very poor family he said i want to be available to all if jesus was born in king's herod's place or king's herod's line, i know there are a lot of prophecies i'm just telling so you'll all understand if he was he was supposed to be born in king herod's line just imagine if a prince is born everyone is not allowed into the palace only the wise men only the scholars the great people were allowed to see jesus but look what jesus said no i am going to be born in a common place common place so i would be accepted by everyone and i will accept everyone that is what the concept of jesus was all about and if we can't accept one another if we still i don't know why uh, i need to bring up this point in a christian still now even christians they talk about caste even till now they talk about different uh, sects why we are still separating recently we got an article saying that all human beings came from two couple or same one couple that's what the article the scientists have released all human beings came from only one couple that is adam and eve it's clearly shown in the bible scientists are trying to prove it but we already got a proven statement hence the proof we got that statement already and still people are trying to search now we we still we are still trying to segregate people we are still trying to have that separation saying no we are not going to accept this the ministry that we do in kazipet they have a separate colony sc colony bc colony and people from bc colony don't come to sc colony sc colony don't come to bc colony but when the demons come they come to the church this is what this is the funniest thing when they when the demons come they come and say pastor please pray for me my mother in law is doing ministry in a sc colony in the desi colony uh, she is doing the ministry and uh, the people from bc also they come in the demons come they get prayed they get uh, delivered from the demons now when we say come to the church pastor amma we cannot come pastor we cannot come why sc colony why because we are not able to accept one another the bible says accept just imagine if god would have said this mine is a godly blood yours is a sinful blood you are not allowed in heaven just imagine this what would have happened he never showed the difference he accepted everyone church listen to this carefully let us accept one another let us keep away the caste the traditions the culture everything don't forget this when we are baptized we take part in only one blood the blood of jesus christ i always ask this what was the caste of jesus christ blood no one can answer it why because he was from a godly line and when we take part in communion we are, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are we are transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light we are transferred from the kingdom of world to the kingdom of word and that is what we need to understand we need to accept everyone only then we can have a wonderful christmas so let this month begin with accepting one another that's why i always tell when i come to church wish everyone don't come as a stranger and go out as a stranger wish everyone church is a place of fellowship if you come to church and if you silently slip away that means you you it's better you attend a online service why because in that also you don't meet people it better to have to that's what god is calling every day they came to church in the early church they came to a place to have fellowship and god is calling us to have fellowship you know i can tell this if i want to be really righteous i will stay at home lock all the doors sit and pray i don't talk to anyone i'll say i'm the righteous person 
Why? Because I don't need to deal with people. And I don't need to hear what people are talking about me. But listen to this. God has kept us in the society. And that's why we have it in sociology. Man is a social being. He wants to be with people. That is how God designed us. When we are with people, we'll have different kinds of people. One will be good, one will be bad, one will be notorious, one will be naughty person, one will be talkative, one will be silent, one will be very shy, one will be very open, one is very narrow, one is very broad. No matter what kind of people you are, accept one another and start celebrating Christmas every day of your life. I'm going to finish this. God accepted all humankind in spite of being sinners. Second, we found Mary accepted God's word, God's plan, God's purpose. Joseph accepted God's word, God's plan and he also accepted Mary in spite of his, all his doubt and all his insults that he's going to face in the society. But still he accepted Mary. We need to celebrate Christmas like God, like Joseph and Mary by accepting one another in love. Let's close our eyes. Let's look unto God.